Hi, everyone. My name is Dana, and this is episode number 36 of the Ask a Question Show, the show in which you ask the question about any type of narcissistic or otherwise abusive or toxic relationship or situation, and I, along with the rest of the community here, will do our very best to help answer it. Our goal is to give you the feedback and the support that you need so that you can move forward in getting the clarity, the closure, and the healing that you so deserve. And so today's question comes from Anonymous, and Anonymous asks, Dear Dana, How do I move forward in forgiving him? I have so much anger and pain inside of me, and I know that in order to get rid of that, I need to forgive him, but I just can't seem to do it. Do you have any tips? All right, fantastic question. So let me give you kind of my take on the word forgiveness. (laughs) I hate the word. (laughs) Like I I absolutely am not a fan of the word forgiveness, and there's a couple of different reasons why. So by and large, in my opinion, the word forgiveness is broken. People have this idea of kind of what it is and what it means. And um, especially when you're dealing with forgiveness in terms of an abusive relationship, it's a slippery slope into like forgiving and forgetting. And you definitely can't ever forget what this person did, because if you do, it's and this is kind of a slippery slope into cognitive dissonance, where we're saying, okay, well, we forgive this person, which somehow means that we're okay with their actions, which then means that we should somehow reopen communication, which what really happens with that is the person gets sucked back into the cycle again. So I don't like, I still, I steer very far away from the word forgiveness. Another reason I don't like the word forgiveness is because I think forgiveness is like trust in the fact that it's earned. It's not just blindly given. And so, um, you know, and it's earned through a person having a sincere accountability for their actions and a sincere level of remorse coupled with massive action to repair the damage that they've done. And so if those two things aren't there, then there's no reason for you to forgive them. Okay. So what do you, what do we do instead? Okay. So in my opinion, what we do instead is we, we seek to achieve acceptance. And what I mean by this is we move towards accepting them for who they are, kind of good and bad, right? We accept them as the whole person and we accept their actions for what they were. And then we act accordingly. So what this means is not that we accept them for who they are and then we welcome them back into our life. No, that's not what I mean at all. What I mean is we see with crystal clear vision, and understanding of what we experience. So if they were lying and cheating and stealing and manipulating or causing physical harm or you know verbal abuse or kind of what have you, that we acknowledge that that's what happened, that that's the kind of behaviors that they have and that we also acknowledge and accept. Um, so, we, so by accepting them and their behavior for what it is, we then release hope, hope of, cha- hope of them changing, hope of our relationship with them changing. We just, we quit being surprised by their behavior. This is especially helpful if this is a person that you have to keep communication open with for whatever reason, if they're family or if you have children with them or, you know, kind of what have you. So it helps to just kind of to see things for exactly how they are and then to act accordingly. So if a person is dangerous or destructive, for you to also accept that it's okay for you to have certain things that are deal breaker behavior and it's okay for you to have standards and boundaries for how you interact with these people. And um, just for you to accept what you need to do in order to stay safe and sane as, as being okay and appropriate. And not having guilt about that or embarrassment or shame or regret um, about any of it. It's just kind of, it is what it is and it ain't what it ain't, right? So you just move forward with that. And getting out of the anger. um, So, you know, I think what really helps with that is to kind of reframe, (sighs) reframe what happened to us. And so, yes, this was definitely, you know, we were a victim. We went through a lot of abuse. But at the same time, we can make the decision right now, right here, right now, that we are not going to give this person the satisfaction of destroying our life. And just kind of making that declaration. And I think, too, once you do that, you'll start finding that your brain is going to start, once you, like, embrace that new belief, your brain's going to start working towards you know, making that belief happen. That's, it's just, it's kind of funny how that happens. So making the declaration, I'm not going to let this person or these events destroy my life. And then to build on that, to really get out of anger is to take it a step further. So if we're a victim, the goal 
in my opinion, isn't to just move from like victim to survivor, where we really get out of anger and into like um, empowerment and all kinds of having a lot of good come from this, like kind of becoming this like emotional alchemist of sorts is when we take, we become our, take our survivorness and we turn it into being a thriver. And so this involves really taking our pain and then giving it a purpose. So for example, for me, I have taken my pain and I have poured it into doing this blog, doing this YouTube channel, doing kind of everything that I'm doing and doing a lot of outreach for it and trying to, to educate the general public as far as what abuse is and the different types of abuse and how all of this goes down. And then trying to reach out to other victims and letting them know that they're not alone and that they're not crazy and that they really can heal and trying to kind of be everything that I guess I needed back when I was going through this in hopes that it will help somebody else. And so doing that has given me a tremendous amount of peace because it's made my pain kind of make sense, I guess. It's given it that purpose. So, you know, and another part of that too is there's a saying out there that, um, you know, really tough circumstances of any kind don't define us, but that they reveal us. And I love that. I love that. So for me in my situation, what if I were to, you know, listen to this thought way back when it would have been like, well, if it's going to reveal me, I really felt like a shell of a human being. I didn't like what I saw. And so I wasn't liking what was being revealed. It was kind of like everything that was you know, every vulnerability and insecurity I had was kicked up by this relationship. I felt really unloved. I felt very unattractive. I felt very um, ignored and important. And, um, you know, it was just, it was gross. I just just really did a number on my self-esteem. So what, you know, what really helps is to think about, okay, what is this revealing in me and what am I wanting it to reveal? And so, Again, kind of so how I was able to reframe this is if you've heard kind of a little bit about my story, my grandmother was married to a narcissist for, I don't even know, 20 something years. He put her through hell. He put his kids through hell. He was a minister and he cheated on her. They had the whole family just driven into poverty. Her life was so hard and he caused so much damage to her in so many different ways. And so when I was going through all of this, when I was healing from Jack and everything, my mom had given me my, uh, my grandmother's book. She'd actually written a book had never been published about kind of her. It was, it's called, um, from divorce to no, from despair to delight or from divorce to despair to delight or something like that. And it was, it, it was her story and how she was able to take this event and make it into one of the best things that had happened to her. And I so admired her for that. And so now when I think about her story, I think I, when I think about her too, I mean, she's since passed away, but I think about her story and I, I see her in terms of how much incredible strength she really had. And so I knew for me that if other people were going to, to view me or my story, I wanted them to look at me in the same way. I wanted them to, I wanted to kind of be that beacon of light for other people and, and for people to say, you know what, if she got through it and look at how strong she is and, and look at, you know, all of this, the, these amazing things that happened to her because of this, then, um, that's the, that's the identity, the, the, um, reframing that I needed to do in order to get to that. I wanted to have how I felt about my grandmother and her experience is I wanted other people to view me in that same term, in those same terms. And so I had to shift my perspective from this event was kind of happening to me to this event was really happening for me. And I was going to just let this reveal the best of me, even though I didn't know what that was. I didn't really quite know how that was going to happen. Um, but I, and I talk about this in some other videos, but I did, I had to do a lot of different things. So everything behind me, um, up here had to do with me trying to discover my best self and remind myself that I was going to let this reveal the kind of the best version of me possible. And I was going to just squeeze out all of the lessons from this, this crash course in personal growth that was, um, these two different relationships that I had, because that's really what it was. So, and I have since done that. I, I, I can honestly say, I really don't have any anger, any pain, um, any resentment, any, any, anything, any negativity about those two relationships whatsoever, because I was able to kind of transmute or trans 
use uh, emotional alchemy is maybe a better term like, to take kind of um you know this this lead and turn it into gold and so that's what i would encourage for you too is to kind of figure out who you want to be who do you want to have be revealed in all of this and make that the most empowering and inspiring version of yourself possible so i hope that helps i will be curious to know you know if any else out there has any you know questions comments concerns insights ideas feedback um you know you need some support you just want to say hi let me know the best way to get a hold of me is through this support group and um yeah so that's that so you guys take care lots of love to you you are not alone you are not crazy and you really can you really truly can move forward and you can heal so take care and i will talk to you guys tomorrow bye